Well, good morning, everyone, and Happy New Year. It is good to be with you on this first Sunday of the new year and to be warm and cozy after some wet, wintry weather. I know some of you, particularly those who maybe have already left the sanctuary, are disappointed that we didn't get any snow. But I'm glad that we are able to gather this morning in our beautiful sanctuary. And I hope that those of you joining us online are warm and comfortable wherever you are. Our service this morning has been full of love, explorations of love, examples of love, words of love, feelings of love, songs of love, love that is too big to name, love that leaves us uncertain and curious, wondering in its wondrousness, Love that is expansive, simple, and yet complex, and containing more than we can comprehend or explore, especially in the time that we have together here this morning. Our ministry theme this month, and truly a theme underscoring our very lives, is the gifts of liberating love. We've touched today on many of the different concepts of under, and understandings of love, yet it's love's liberating power that I want to lift up and identify as the core or the center of our Unitarian Universalist faith. More on that in a minute, but first, many of you are aware that our denomination is deep into a multi-year process of re-articulating who we are as an association of congregations. This important work is mandated by the bylaws of the Unitarian Universalist Association and is at the heart of what it means to be a living tradition. As a living tradition, we must be open to new learnings and deeper understandings new ways of being, and new truths. Revered 20th century UU theologian James Luther Adams reminds us that revelation is not sealed. What this means is that there is always more to consider and to learn. As Unitarian Universalists, we are lifelong learners tasked with our own ongoing faith development from the cradle to the grave. We look to many sources, both ancient and modern, to help give shape and meaning to our understandings and beliefs. Our tradition does not require a professed statement of belief or adoption of a shared creed. Instead, we must each engage in our own ongoing search for truth and meaning. And we must each discern how to incorporate our understandings into lived practice, into the choices we make, into the actions we take or don't take, into the very fabric of our lives. And we don't have to do this alone. As part of our covenant with each other, for we are a covenantal faith between each other as individuals and between our sibling UU congregations, we promise to keep articulating and affirming the shared values and commitments that guide each of us in our own understandings of that which is of ultimate importance. We promise to support each other and encourage each other's continued unfolding into our full humanity. The work of reflecting on and assessing our core values as individuals and as a denomination is good work. It is holy work for a people who seek faithful companions on this journey that we call life. It is essential for people who desire to be true to who we say we are and all that we aspire to be. It is our work as people of faith, as religious liberals, 
as Unitarian Universalists. And so we find ourselves with our sibling UU congregations around the country looking at new language for articulating our aspirations and how we want to embody them. This rearticulation has placed love at the center in our understanding of who we are, what we most deeply value, and for what is guiding us to the work of liberation for all. So here's what the proposed Article 2 of the UUA bylaws says. As Unitarian Universalists, we covenant congregation to congregation and through our association to support and assist one another in our ministries. We draw from our heritages of freedom, reason, hope, and courage, building on the foundation of love. Love is the power that holds us together and is at the center of our shared values. We are accountable to one another for doing the work of living our shared values through the spiritual discipline of love. Building on the foundation of love, doing the work of living our shared values through the spiritual discipline of love. Here's where, for me, the emphasis is on liberatory love, and that is key. Think for a minute about how you understand or define liberating or liberatory. Here are a few words from the, the, from the thesaurus, and as I read them, I want you to notice what happens to your body, in your body, as you hear them. Redemptive redeeming, saving, rescuing, delivering, emancipating, releasing, therapeutic, cathartic, beneficial, healing, energizing, invigorating, freeing, unshackling, unfettering, set free liberating love, a love that helps set each of us free, a quality of being with ourselves and with others that makes space for and honors who we already are, while also supporting and inviting us and others to all of our full humanity, a love that is with us during the good and easy times, as well as the hard and hurting times, a love that knows you are more than the worst thing you've ever done. A love that is not simple or easy, yet wondrous and enough. A love that continues to unfold in our lives, that guides us in our words, our thoughts and deeds. A love that knows us by our names. In her book, Fluent in Faith, UU Minister Jean Harrison Nuyar writes, there are many definitions of love, and one that seems particularly appropriate asserts, love is a decision you make, not a feeling you have. This is a countercultural claim, countercultural claim. Our main mainstream culture focuses on the feeling aspect of love. We fall in love, we say, seemingly with no control or responsibility for the process. But what a narrow and ultimately problematic way to view love as being swept up helplessly in some whirlwind of emotion. To consider instead that love is a decision we make. That's a profound paradigm shift, leading us towards responsibility and commitment. We decide to love one another, not because the other is lovable, but because we are loving beings. We love because love is our essence, because we are called to make this love real in the world." End quote. So as we think about how we can answer this call to make liberating love real in our own lives and in the world, it helps to think of love 
as a conscious decision that we make again and again to think of it as our foundation. It helps to think of love as a spiritual discipline that we work with daily. This graphic, which reflects additional new language our Association of Congregations will vote to adopt this June at the UUA General Assembly, helps us visualize how we as UUs can put our love into action by living the values of interdependence with the web of life, honoring the pluralism that allows us to celebrate all beings as sacred in our diversity, working for justice as we strive to be diverse, multicultural, beloved communities where all thrive, living into our own transformation as we adapt to the changing world, while cultivating a spirit of generosity through gratitude and hope and equity as we declare that every person has the right to flourish with inherent dignity and worthiness. This rearticulation of our values can be our map. It can serve as one of our guides for how to engage with these aspirations, these values, and to know that we are not alone in our efforts or our dreams for building a better world. We are not alone. We are not alone in our efforts and our dreams. There is so much good and important liberatory love around us, within us, amongst us, waiting to be noticed, inviting us to join in. We practice it in large and small ways every day. There is liberatory love happening right this minute in our religious education classes, in this very building where our toddlers through our seventh graders are experiencing the care of love in our community, where seeds of kindness and hope and liberation are being planted and nourished in young minds, willing hands, and open hearts. This is liberatory love. And of course, our comprehensive sexuality education class, Our Whole Lives, or OWL, and our senior high youth group are life-giving transformational places for our youth. So many good and important things happen here. And we, we, our collective community, our liberatory love is what makes this possible. I've shared before how being raised UU is one of the greatest gifts of my life. I recall with such fondness my UU Sunday school teachers and the other loving adults in the first UU congregation of Lubbock, Texas. Shirley, Kathy, Bob, Pat, Sarah, Joan, Dwayne, and so many others whose liberating love for me and for the other children of our congregation changed the world. We do that here too. Through our RE programs, our monthly food pantry, our soup kitchen teams, our hospital meal packets, our river cleanup days, our care net that provides meals to congregants in times of need, our pastoral visitors, our hosting of Pacham guests, our relationship with refugee and immigrant families, our covenant groups, our friendship circles, and so much more. Oh my goodness, there is so much liberating love alive and in action here. It takes my breath away to witness it all. And because love, liberating love, is an endless, renewable resource, there is room for so much more. There is more than enough, and we are rich with it and the possibility for it. There is a New Year practice that some people have, and maybe you do, of choosing a word for the New Year a word that serves as a talisman or a refocusing point or a hope or a goal or a reminder. And I'm going to suggest a word we might all choose for the coming year. Can you guess what it might be? Love. Or if you want to go with two words, liberating love. You might write liberating love on a slip of paper and place it on your bathroom mirror or leave it in the cup holder of your car or put it on your refrigerator door. You might wear a bracelet that you know is a reminder of you embodying liberating love. Whatever you do, I encourage you to think about how you might focus the power of your liberating love in 2024. 
Perhaps you'll commit to getting people out to vote in this year's elections. Or maybe your focus will be on living lighter on the earth or other environmental actions. Or maybe you'll focus your liberating love on parenting the children in your life, your own children or the children of our church or in the wider community. This is such a big and important job. And there is so much need for liberatory love in our world. One of the wise women in my life, Sharifa Oppenheimer, a local educator and religious leader, mother, grandmother, and change agent, wrote in a recent blog these powerful words, and I want to share them with you from her book, A Litany of Wild Graces. It's entitled, Only Love is Strong Enough. She writes, we walk into a new year which is filled with the terrors created by the prevailing story of domination and exploitation. Yet, the very ancient seeds of healing and wholeness, which have lain dormant for centuries, are stirring underground. These ever new, ever eternal energies are too subtle to be caught in the web. The glare of news media and social media yet they are powerfully awakening and a chorus of voices is singing this new birth into being. Wild, uninhibited love is the single force powerful enough to send us head over heels out of our minds and into our bodies to bring us home to our senses. The enchantment of the senses, the same magic used by the flower who seduces a honeybee to carry pollen for his petaled love, hope to entice you to love the world in ways you have forgotten. Carry this breath of devotion into the world to become bellows that blow the spark of love kindling human hearts, to set ablaze a love that burns out dead wood, domination, greed, exploitation, and leaves fertilizing ash to impregnate minds and midwife the birthing of a new world. To love the world is to walk the path of restoration and regeneration, a radical and new and ancient relationship that sustains the one being we have always been, and now we become again. May it be so. Amen and blessed be.